again, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Discussions of Darkness. This week I wanted to touch on a topic that, though most of us know about it, often goes unremarked, particularly when you're a storyteller and you're looking for ways to, I won't say control, but to at least um, encourage your players to go in certain directions or to maintain certain codes of conduct or types of behavior. Now, if you've read basically any World of Darkness or Chronicles of Darkness game, you've noticed there are a lot of similarities between all of them. There's a certain structure and a certain function to the way these games are set up that kind of gives them their unique identity and personality. And I've said this before of there's the, the thing that you are, the organization you join, and the special pocket realm that only your type of monster can access. And those are the general three things that we tend to look for. However, there is something else that sort of goes between all of the different games and that is present that is meant to be used as a tool both as storytellers and as players but we often set it aside or forget about it or don't really engage with it because it seems complicated or it seems like just a bit of world building fluff that's not really that important and that is the governing structure that is in charge of your particular sphere of the world of chronicles of darkness for those who aren't sure what I'm talking about and maybe think this is related to the politics in the game video I did previously, that's not what we're discussing here. Generally speaking, with a few exceptions like Geist the Sin Eaters or Promethean the Created, most monsters have a governing structure for their secret societies. You know, if you're playing a vampire game and your characters are members of the Camarilla, you have a very aristocratic sort of hierarchy. If you're playing Changeling the Lost, you have the court system, whether it's the seasonal courts, whether it's the directional courts, whether you choose to do sun, sun and moon or dawn and dusk. There's all sorts of political options available, even if you go to games which seem like they'd be very freewheeling and open, like uh, Werewolf the Apocalypse, you still have the tribal structures, you still have you know, the moots and the rights, you have your elders, and you have your hierarchy based on who has achieved what rank. And these things aren't just there to offer some sort of structure to this uh, fantastical world that we find ourselves in beneath the modern world that we all know, but they're also there to help provide structure for your players and for the chronicles that you want to get them involved in. For example, oftentimes when we're playing a classic RPG, something that's more high fantasy, you have your party of adventurers and they're going out to do whatever it is they're doing. They're stopping an evil lich, they're attacking a goblin horde, they're dealing with local trolls. Most of the time, those individuals don't really have a governing structure. They don't really have anyone in charge of them. They're just here to achieve their goals, whether it's to usually get vengeance, to get some money, to achieve some kind of personal fortune, to do a favor for somebody. Those are very individual things, they're very personal goals, and while you should have that in the world in Chronicles of Darkness, it's also important to remember that these monsters live in a society most of the time, and in order to maintain their place in that society, they have to follow the rules and the regulations and the commandments of those above them, or at least those who have power over them if it's uh, more egalitarian. This is a great thing for you as a storyteller in two major ways. Firstly, it gives you someone who technically has some sort of say over your players and over their characters who can send them out to do things. And this can be particularly useful because as storytellers, as game masters, we've all had those moments where we drop some plot hooks in front of our players and Without thinking, oftentimes, they will often shrug and say, well, my character's not interested in that, you know, they're not going to do it. In this case, if you're a vampire and your scourge tells you to go get something done or the prince hands down an order, it's not a suggestion. You are to go and do this thing. You are now part of the plot. It's very similar to if your character was part of a military structure. You might not like the orders that you're given by your commanding officers, but you still have to follow through on them, otherwise there will be consequences. And usually avoiding those consequences is very motivating for players, in addition to whatever rewards they get for actually completing the task that you gave them. And this is particularly useful for modern settings where you may not have the usual driving factors you get of a 
more classic, more high fantasy games where things can be very personal and very high stakes in that regard. Secondly, though, and this is a lesson we actually can take from big business. Have you ever wondered why there are so many middle manager titles and positions and various other things in corporate America? Probably not if you don't work there. One of the curious things about it is that decades ago, people who study psychology, who study business, realize that if you give people a title, if you give them some semblance of authority or power, that will motivate them, often in lieu of a salary increase. So people will do more work and they will work harder just because you put a title in front of their name and gave them a little bit of authority. This is something as a storyteller you can use, because these political structures that exist in our games aren't just there to direct the player characters. They're not just there to give you a whip to hold when you want them to go forward. They also exist as a form of upward mobility a lot of the time. So if there is a rank in this governing structure of your game that your players could be given that fits with their interests, for example, if you're playing Werewolf the Apocalypse and one of your characters wants to be the biggest, baddest warrior that, you know, the Sept has, they might challenge for the worm foe position, which is an individual who is basically the one you turn to when something weird, evil, and corrupt shows up. And it's not just that they have that recognition of you are our most potent fighter. You are the one we trust to deal with these things and to be put in charge in these situations. It's also that extra bit of responsibility because not only do you get the benefits of the title and you get all of that recognition, you now have a new job, so if something crops up, you have to deal with it. And typically, especially with werewolves, if you have to deal with it, your pack has to deal with it because you know werewolves are not solitary creatures, they are a pack-based society. So you have just figured out a way to make sure that at least one of your characters has proper motivation, and if they have it, they can usually drag everyone else along with them. A very similar thing for any other position in any other society that the game produces. Whether your character is a member of a particular organization in Mage, they're going to have individuals above them. They're going to have goals that their organization is attempting to achieve. They're going to have ranks. They're going to have whatever their equivalent of middle managers are. They're going to have their generals in charge telling them what the agenda is and setting the larger goals that everyone is working towards. If you're in Changeling, you not only have the courts, as I mentioned previously, but if you're playing the New World version of Changeling, as opposed to the Chronicles edition, you have entitlements, which can act as their own organizations. And this gives you a boon and a benefit for joining, but you also have to make sure that you are holding to that organization's standards, you're achieving the tasks that they set for you, and you're a member in good standing. Even if you're a hunter, there's the organizations you join, whether you're a member of the union or whether you're part of the uh, more exclusive clubs that hunters can come from. But you need to make sure that you are a member in good standing, that you follow through on the tasks that they give you, and that you're not breaking the rules. All of these things are great for providing some structure to how this secret world works. They give you, as the storyteller, NPCs you can put in these positions to either act as antagonists is a strong word, but uh, individuals who people may grudgingly respect rather than like. And it gives you some semblance of control over how things are running in this world of shadows. And it can sometimes provide motivation for players who want to climb that ladder and they want to have these positions of authority and power and they want to have titles of their own. Maybe they actually just want to boss around NPCs to uh, give them a team to deal with threats so they're not just all on their own. Also an option if you want to get a little more complicated and a little more involved when it comes to how plot gets solved in your games. But to finish off this week's little ramble, the important thing for you as a storyteller is not just to know that these structures exist, but to make sure that they feel filled out and organic, and that the NPCs that are in these structures, that are in these positions that make them up, have stories, they have personalities, they have histories that your players can and will become aware of. 
For example, if you have someone who has been, you know, the fall king in Changeling for a long period of time, where did they come from? Who are they? Are they feared? Are they respected? Are they loved? What has their rule been like? Is their current incarnation of them as monarch representative of the entire time, or have they mellowed over the years? And you know, the individuals who are in their support staff, what is the Paladin of Shadows, you know, the Fall Court Enforcer? What are they like? How did they get this job? Is the version that people see of them at court or at various events who they actually are? Or is it more like a professional wrestler where this is a persona they put on while they're at work because it makes their job easier? And that's really not who they are when they step away from the job and they're just living their lives. Same thing with any position in any game of who is the whip when it comes to vampire? You know, who is the prince? Are they new? Are they old? Are they young? Do they value their position? Do they listen to various uh, other positions when it comes to people's politics? Are they a tyrant? Are they even-handed? All of these things can be very important because they make up the world building of where your players are, and it gives personality to the town, the city, the duchy they happen to be in. Even if you never take your players to any other location that's governed by any other individuals, though you should do that if you're going to have a long-running chronicle just to offer some contrast as to where they're from and where they're going, it's important to make sure that these things, much like the physical location that your players are actually uh, going to, is part of the personality of your setting because it's such an intricate part of everything, it's such an intimate part of everything, I should say, that if you just sort of leave it bland, that blandness is going to spread out to the rest of your game, and it's going to make everything else feel like a cardboard cutout. If the monsters running this particular corner of the shadowed world don't feel real, they don't have personality, they don't have all of these things that are necessary for making sure that your players feel like they're part of a living, breathing world, then everything else is just going to sort of fall flat again, and we're going to realize this is just a game and we're all just playing pretend. We won't have that immersion that we need to really bring things home. So, to sum up, Use the structure that we've been given to make sure that our players actually have uh, some rails to go on if they need to move in a particular direction. But at the same time, make sure that those rails are well decorated, that they're pretty, and that it's hard to see the track under all of the flowers. That's all for this week's edition. If there's anything in particular that you've uh, experienced with these power structures, whether good or bad, Tell us what game you played it in, and tell us who the character was that either worked so badly or which worked so egregiously well. And uh, if you remember, tell us what their position was and what game they were in, so that people know uh, what to do going forward. But uh, as always, if you have any particular topics uh, for the World or Chronicles of Darkness, feel free to leave those in the comments if you'd like to see me cover them. If you have... Uh, any particular spheres you want to see mentioned or any aspects of the setting that are confusing or that interest you personally that you feel don't get enough love, let me know about those as well. But uh, until next time, happy gaming, everyone. Thank you for staying to the end of this episode of Discussions of Darkness. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking the video and sharing it on your own social media to help boost the signal. And if you'd like to help us keep the show and channel going, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well. If you have any questions about the topic I covered today, or if you have something you'd like to see covered in a future episode, make sure to leave it in the comments below. Lastly, please check out the link in the video description to browse all of my World and Chronicles of Darkness supplements from Ezekiel Games. So far, we've covered Changeling the Lost, Vampire the Masquerade, Mage the Awakening, and Geist the Sin Eaters, in addition to a handful of general supplements that will be useful for any game set in the World or Chronicles of Darkness settings. Thank you in advance for your support. You're the ones who help us keep the lights on, so we don't fade into the shadows. <laughs>